If you love the idea of decorating and upcycling things, but you don't have the money or the time, I'm going to show you the easiest cheat for updating your spaces on the tiniest budget ever. Let's go. Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Eppley, and on this channel, I love bringing you ideas for organizing, decluttering, doing DIYs, upcycles, and anything crafty. But saving money is oh so sweet in my list of priorities. So if I can find a way to up the look of a place on a tiny budget, I'm always up for that. And one of my most favorite items to use to elevate the look of something is contact paper. It's super affordable. It comes in so many different colors. It's removable. It's easy to use. And let's face it, it's at the Dollar Tree, so it's cheap. Now you can get contact paper at so many other places. The difference usually isn't the product, but the length of how much you get on a roll and the width. So if you're doing a big project, I recommend getting at Walmart or Home Depot sells the really big rolls or save yourself the time and get it online. Here's a quick glance at some of the things I've done in the past with contact paper. I've taken my old rental kitchen and done the backsplash in a beautiful wood pattern that was one of my favorites. I've updated my bookcases many times from just white, black and white. I did a colorful floral and then I did this wood grain, which happens to be my longest and most favorite. I've also taken a bunch of boxes and made these little dressers and used the contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And I got these little file cabinets from Habitat from Humanity and I didn't want to paint them, but covering them with contact paper made a beautiful solution. And if I ever want to go back to wood, there's no stripping involved. I've lined the backs of my little spice cabinets. I even covered a pair of roller skates once. So there's proof that I've loved using this product in the past. Online, you'll find so many great ideas just from covering simple boxes or again, covering the back of a shelf or a wall unit. As I've shown, using it for furniture can really elevate the look without a lot of effort or cost. But this room with the black and white, as I said, I love this paper. So I had an opportunity to go up and see my daughter. She's moving into her very first apartment and it was a traditional apartment with dark, icky counters in all of the rooms. They've been scratched, broken, burned, boiled, you name it, this has happened to these counters. And we wanted to elevate the look. Now, obviously, since it's a rental, we can't do anything with painting. We're certainly not going to take the expense of putting in new counters, especially with them being this damaged, though. We wanted to do something to make it feel more elevated. So my solution, of course, I'm going to use the contact paper once again. Now, this particular brand is from Amazon. It's the v -Lock, and it was my first time using it, but the assortment of what they had and I'm not sponsored. This was just a product I bought myself, I loved, and I wanted to share with you. They have marble, granite, metallic, wood, all types of different looking veneers. So if you're interested, I will have the link down in the description below, but look through some of the options. It's a little bit thicker than regular contact paper and the rolls are a little bit wider and they sell them in varying lengths. So depending upon what kind of project you're using, the prices will range from about $11 up to about $30, but I loved this product. As I mentioned, you can go to my storefront on Amazon. I do get a small commission from anything that you purchase off of this list. It helps me out a little bit and there is no additional cost for you. Unfortunately, I did not bring my tripod when I went to help her, so she is the camera person right now and kind of kept forgetting that we had a job to do here and we would get distracted with chatting and singing and dancing and being goofy. So I will spare you the video of us trying to do this. I'll just keep the highlights. This works just like regular contact paper. It has grids on the back. You measure it out and cut it and then you peel off the back just as you would any other type of contact paper. Now, this brand, the V-Like, is very sticky. So I recommend only peeling off what you need. So I peeled off a little corner. I folded it down on this first piece, but you'll see later on, I start just ripping a whole little part 
of the backing off to expose the paper, but the more you expose, the harder it is to work with. So I want to start and make sure it's square. So I'm lining up the edge of this contact paper with the front of the counter because this is where you're going to see it first. And I just want to caution you, take off your rings. If your nails are long, put on a little pair of gloves or an oven mitt, something to keep the scratches off just while you're applying it. Once I got the front lined out, I pulled it up and removed the rest of the backer and just smoothed it out. And again, we were being a little goofy, so I'm not going to show you everything that we filmed, but here it is after. Once you have it flat, I recommend getting a small straight edge and cutting off the excess. This usually works very easily, but if you do not like this technique, if you're not comfortable with the knife, or if the edges aren't even, since this one was broken, I ran into that a little bit, I recommend then taking a file and cutting it. But because this one had a flat edge, it's so easy to just cut it. Once you have it pressed in, you'll have a very clean cut edge. Super easy. Here's where I'm showing you to file it off. This is just a regular nail file. You can go along the edge and it will give a super clean finish. Now we're into the kitchen and again, I'm not going to show the entire techniques. I'm just going to give you some of the tips and tricks by using something that is cushioned like my sleeve or an oven mitt, you're able to press it in more. Now, because they are only a certain width, you do have to do counters in two sections. So right now we're cutting a second piece that's going to be for the back portion and the backsplash. You'll see here in a moment that I'm lining it up to see which side of the paper is going to look better with the way the pattern is because you're going to see a slight seam, but once you put it together, you really won't even notice. So here's the example I mentioned where I'm ripping off the backing instead of trying to fold it over. The less I have to try and move the paper around, the better. So I am lining up the first middle part so that I can adjust as I'm going out. And once I get the seam completely placed in, I will go ahead and fold the unattached portion down and remove the paper. When you're doing a counter like this and there is a backsplash, it's a little bit difficult to navigate. We learned after this first piece that it's easier to do the flat portion as a cut piece and then do the backsplash as a separate cut piece. You'll see when I get to the back here, I'm having difficulty getting it lined up. We just went ahead and gave up, got a knife, and we cut it. So by cutting it, it did create a little bit of a gap, but I promise I'm gonna show you a trick here that will make this look perfect. You won't even believe that this was just contact paper. But with the separate piece, it's so much easier to place it along the back to make sure it's square and press it into the corner. If you encounter any bubbles, just get a straight pin that you would have for sewing, pierce it and press around and those bubbles will disappear. Once again, now that I have an edge, I'm going to run the blade against the flat edge to get the cleanest cut. Folding it over is usually difficult because what you're attaching the underside to is a different material. In this case, it's just cheap fiberboard, so it's not going to stick. For this side piece, I went ahead and just cut a piece and trimmed it to fit. But do you notice that I caulked along the backsplash and where the seam is? And also where the wall meets the cabinet was a big gap, so I caulked that as well. When you are using contact paper on counters, let the caulk be your friend. It does a couple of things. Number one, it corrects any of those little areas like edges or around sinks or stoves that are just really hard to make a perfect cut around. So do your best to cut it. And if there's a gap, don't worry about it because the other thing besides hiding those flaws that caulk does is it keeps any water or dirt from getting under those seams. And when you go to peel it off, the caulk comes right up and will look exactly like it did before you did this technique. But in the interim, while it's on there, no one will even know it was contact paper. Or if you put it on furniture like my file cabinets, no one's gonna know. 
The next thing we were gonna work on is her bathroom. I did not buy enough contact paper. She's up in Northern California, so we took the opportunity to take a little drive. I'm sharing this because I just thought it was a gorgeous day, and all of those little flower blossoms was just beautiful to me. We also stopped off at our favorite Savers store, and this little white lamp, it's not a lamp, but it has a shade, I don't know. I'm gonna be doing something with it, so stay tuned for that. We ran into our local Dollar Tree, and as I said, there's so many different styles. The grippy papers will not work on furniture. You want the traditional vinyl, but they have granite, they have light wood, dark wood, they have different patterns. Of course, my black and white is there, so, so choose the type you like. We ended up getting this marble contact paper, which took two seams and one and a half rolls, and I think it looks spectacular. So here's the before of her kitchen, and here it is after. And we fixed the lights and put in new LED white lights. We took these broken brown dingy cabinet counters, covered them with this beautiful pinkish marble, which is such a fun thing for her first apartment. And as you're looking, you can't even see the seams, which I find amazing, but it absolutely transformed the look. So over here, I wanna show you where one of the biggest seams is. And if you're not really staring at it up close, you won't even notice, but caulking around the entire sink perimeter is what makes this look so finished and clean as well as doing the backsplash. Same thing with the bathroom. We caulked all around the sink, along anywhere where the backsplash is connected to the top counter. And what we have is a seamless, high-end looking item. And all she has to do is peel it off when it's time to move out. And this will look exactly as it did when she moved in. Have you played with contact paper? I really find it to be one of the most forgiving and fun items to work with. There is a small learning curve, so start out with small items, figure out how much you can stretch it and manipulate it. And if you're ever finding a problem where it's just not adhering around a curve, I found this a lot when I was covering my roller skates, using a heat gun a little bit of a distance away will help melt it into place, but be careful because it will burn through. But if you're having a hard time using it in some of these corners. When I did my file cabinets, there was a lot of grooves and decorative accents. I just used the heat gun around the edges and it helped just shrink it into place for a perfect fitting without having to cut multiple strips and try and fit them in. So play with the contact. Let me know what you think. And I don't know if you noticed, but I finished one of the first DIY upcycles from the video a few weeks ago. I was hoping to do them all at once in one video, but I'm having a hard time getting some of the items. So, and it's because a lot of you said, don't cut up books. So I'm trying to find a book lovers, book friendly way of doing that. And it's taking me a little longer. So they might end up being one video each, but I'll try and get them out as soon as possible. So if you're interested in how to make these and the other DIYs that were voted on, make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I love having so many friends to chat with in the comments. So if you haven't said hello in a while, please do so. And thank you so much to my patrons. Their financial support really makes it possible for me to do these videos. So from the bottom of my heart, patrons, thank you. And if you would like to support this channel, all of that information is down in the description below. I will see you guys in just a few days. Bye.